So I was born and raised in a sea of adults. I'm an only child, and in my little corner of Philadelphia, there weren't very many kids around my age. And as I was growing up, I always had this intense desire for a sister, someone who could give me advice and who could show me the ways of the world. Now, as I got older, this desire for a sister slightly waned. And friendships, especially high school friendships, replaced this need. And so by the time I was 22 and I was entering the Peace Corps and I was going to Nicaragua, having a sister was the last thing on my mind. And it's also when I met Mercedita. So it was my first day in Tlica, and I was walking the streets looking for my host family's house. And in the distance, I see this big, blue, beautiful house on a sunny corner. And I automatically know that it's mine. And as I get closer and closer, I notice that the door is slightly askew and that there are these four little eyes peering out at me. And as I get closer, the door opens wider and wider. And by the time I'm at the front entrance, the door is completely open. And there stands my host brother, Angel, and my host sister, Mercedita. And I remember Mercedita in particular. She was about my height, and she had this long, shiny black hair and these big brown eyes that she was using to give me the most judgmental side glance up and down. And I think as girls, when we get older, we learn how to give this side glance more discreetly with age. But at 10, Mercedita was staring straight through me. And up until that point in my life, I don't think I'd ever been intimidated by a bunch of kids. But at that point, I was terrified. I desperately wanted Angel and Mercedita to like me. I wanted them to think I was cool. I wanted us to be friends. I was planning on living two years there. And so for the first few weeks, it kind of continued on as such, walking on eggshells, especially with Mercedita, who I think was trying to figure out who is this crazy gringa in my house. However, the walls started to fall, and I actually have English to thank for that. So Mercedita was learning the basic English greetings at her local elementary school. You know, hello, good morning, goodbye, good afternoon. And so I suggested that we practice together. But also, kind of being the silly weirdo that I am, I suggested that we call each other beautiful girl. I mean, who doesn't love to be called beautiful girl? And I also think we need to have more positivity in the world. And so every morning, every afternoon, I would greet Mercita with a hello, beautiful girl. And at first, her response would be that ever-present side glance that totally confirmed how lame my idea was. However, slowly but surely, it started to catch on. And I remember one day in particular, I was coming home from a long day of work, and I see Mercita on the porch, and as I get closer, she says, hello, beautiful girl. And that totally wiped away the day's bad memories. And so Mercy and I went from acquaintances to friends to sisters. And I think that's something that naturally happens when you're living with a host family for an extended period of time. You become involved in each other's lives, both the ugly and the beautiful. And up until that point in my life, the familial love I'd experienced only extended to a very small circle of people, all who were older than me and all who had imparted their own life experiences on me. But with Mercedita, I felt like it was my turn. I wanted to show Mercedita the world. I wanted to protect her when Angel was being annoying. I wanted to show her that vegetables could actually be delicious. And I also wanted to teach her something that had taken me a very long time to learn that in the grand scheme of things, it really doesn't matter what other people think of you. But this story isn't about what I taught Mercedita. Rather, it's about what she taught me. And I don't think I fully understood that until the very end of my service. So fast forward to October 25th, 2015. It's my last day in Talika, and I'm upset, I'm crying, I'm a mess. I can't believe I'm leaving this place that's now become my home. And I remember so clearly that day, Mercedita came up to me and she started comforting me and soothing me and drying my tears. 
And at that moment, I realized maybe I wasn't the big sister after all. I had always ascribed to the common misconception that we can only learn things from people who are older than us. But Mercedita taught me a lot. And in particular, she taught me about perseverance or the ability to keep going, even when times are really difficult. Nicaragua is a place where you need to have perseverance. It's a place where you will hear people say, seguimos adelante, which means keep going, keep trying, keep moving. Perseverance is something that can take a lifetime to learn. And at the age of 12, Mercedita exemplified perseverance. She exemplified perseverance through volcanic eruptions, through stress at school, and through life's daily catch balls. And so, on that day, October 25th, lots of things became blurry. Maybe I wasn't the big sister after all. Maybe it was the complete role reversal. And like lots of other Return Peace Corps volunteers, maybe I learned a lot more than I actually taught. But one thing remained crystal clear. As I turned to Mercedita to say my final goodbye, she looked me in directly in the eye with no side glance whatsoever, and in the most perfect English said, goodbye, my beautiful sister. Thank you.